Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Now back in 1998, a friend of mine bought his first new car and that was a Ford Puma. It was based on the Mark IV Fiesta, but unlike the Fiesta, this was a two plus two coupe. It looks cool, but more importantly, it was a real driver's car. It was a right laugh to drive. I had many hours behind the wheel. Unfortunately, sales figures disagreed with me on it being a great car because they only made it from 1997 through to 2002. And at that point, Ford hung up their manufacturing gloves on the Puma and it disappeared until last year. And that is what I have here, thanks to Hendy Ford in Tunbridge Wells. Now I wanna say a big thank you to the guys there. And just to note, the doors might be shut, but they are open for click and collect services. Uh, video presentations, telephone calls. So if you want to buy a Ford Puma, like this one, give the guys a ring. It has certainly grown up a lot since the Mark I, but I'm really looking forward to this. I've got some very fond memories of the Mark I. This looks very, very different, but I'm hoping I'm going to have some fond memories by the end of this video. The Puma is based on the latest generation of Ford Fiesta, and that is a good thing. That car has won a number of awards. Well, this is just one 2020 car of the year. So I'm expecting this to be a great car. But let's talk around the styling. The biggest nod back to the Mark I Puma has to be the headlights. These are LEDs. And as you can see, they're set higher up and pushed back along the wing. If you look at it from certain angles, it looks a bit like a Porsche McCann. We've got a satin grille with a gloss surround. And being the ST line, it's slightly more aggressive than the titanium. I love the look of this. We've got splitters and all kinds of angles and details going on here. Admittedly, some of these vents are fake, but I'm going to forgive it. I love the look of this car from the front. Now, unless you've got your eyes closed, you may have noticed this isn't a coupe like the Mark I Puma. This sits 54 mil higher, 71 mil wider than the Fiesta it's based on. We've got a wide body kit beefed out wheel arches, the optional 19 inch wheels really finish off this car, blacked out privacy glass. I personally think this is one of the best looking compact SUVs out there. I'll let you take in the side profile before we have a look around the back. This being a more sporty model in the lineup, we get a large spoiler. The Puma badge sits proudly in the middle here. We've got parking sensors on the lower bumper. Now you can upgrade with numerous packs if you want reversing cameras. We've got a real exhaust down there. I think this thing looks pretty smart. These lights also look really cool when they're on. So let's have a look in the boot because there's something very, very clever going on in here. Drum roll, please. There we go. Look at that, the boot. Now you may think, Damien's gone mad. What is special about this boot? Well, nothing here. It's what's underneath this floor. A lot of cars don't come with spare wheels anyway and just end up with a waste of space. Now, Ford have been creative with this and created something called the Ford Mega Box. Not a great name, but a great use of space. So look at this. Under here, I've got all of my camera equipment. So I've got a rucksack, another bag, and yet another bag. Whereas on a normal car, I would have taken up at least half the back. So what a great invention. One thing the original Puma had issues with was headroom. So is this Mark II any better? Luckily it is. Mark I was a coupe, this is not. And that is one thing I am very, very thankful for. I'm six foot for a bit of context, so my driver's seat is where I was driving earlier. Got a couple of inches above my head, a good inch or so on the back of these seats. The actual seats themselves, they're very, very soft. They're very squidgy, lovely. I would very much enjoy being a passenger in here. Detail wise as well, we've got some red stitching on the back of the seats got some cargo net things on the back of each seat as well. We've got a cubby hole here. Doesn't seem to be any USB charging ports, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I'd expect that maybe that's on a different model. I'm not sure. Plenty of rub for a couple of adults. 
Three maybe at a push, certainly three children be very happy. Isofix on either side, so that's perfect. Controls for the electric windows, couple of door bins. So it's a nice place to be in the back here. The other thing this car's got is child locks. Now child locks are great to stop kids getting out of the car. What they also do is lock YouTubers in the back of the car as well. I'm stuck in here now. Um, yeah, I've got to do some gymnastics to get out of this car. Hopefully if you're watching this video, you know I eventually made it, or I'm still stuck in the field I'm filming in. Oh dear. Um, yeah, I need to get out of this, because I want to take this thing on for a drive, because it's about the driving experience as well. I think the outside of the Puma is a good looking car. Practical in the back, well, unless you're me and lock yourself in the back with the child locks. But now we're in the driver's seat, we can talk about the driving experience and the tech. Start off with the engine. So up front we've got a one litre, three cylinder EcoBoost engine. Coupled to that we have a mild hybrid. So we've got 155 PS, 240 newton metres of torque. 60 in 8.9 seconds. So it's enough speed to have some fun. It's not fast like the ST, but it's certainly no slouch. The party piece of this car has to be the mild hybrid system fitted to it. So a traditional hybrid or a plug-in hybrid means you can run on just electric power only. This on the other hand has a 48 volt lithium ion battery and a small electric motor which helps out when required. So in terms of performance, while the turbo is spooling up in a traditional car you'd have lag, the electric motor in here torque fills so you get smoother and better acceleration. It really does make this feel a more peppy engine compared to a standard one litre. The other side of the coin is fuel economy. So what this does is when you're coming to a stop, as long as you've got enough battery, I think there's certain caveats on this, but when you get down to 30 miles an hour and you're slowing down, it will shut the petrol engine down, keep the electric running to run things like power steering and dials. So you then come to a halt with no petrol running. You then pull away from the lights, normally with the electric motor, and that's it, and then the petrol comes in, so it's going to save quite a bit of fuel. You know, this does, I think they claim something like 50.3 mpg, which I think is very, very impressive. So we know the Puma has got a good sized boot, 456 litres, and with the design of that mega box, it really does make it a very flexible storage area. The trouble is 456 litres. That's very difficult to imagine that sort of amount of storage. 456 bottles of water can slosh around in the back. Yeah, you see what I mean? Not very useful at all in the real world. So what I've done, I've ordered a week shopping on Click and Collect. I'm going to head over there to the supermarket, pick up the shopping, load up the back, and that will give you a far better idea of how much shopping can you fit in the back of the Puma. the digital dash on there it was inspired from the Ford GT and it comes as standard in all models other than the base titanium you can customize what you see on it and depending on the driving mode will depend on also what you can see so let's have a chat about the driving modes there's a selector down on the left hand side just behind the gear stick and I can press that and go through different screen so if I press it once so we'll go 
from normal into eco so that just calms the throttle response down and puts you in a more relaxed driving mode different colors so we'll go through again eco through to sport sport makes everything a bit more aggressive firms everything up this it's quite a peppy little engine i mean considering it is like i said only a one liter yeah i like that so let's go through to the next setting we've got slippery that's when it's well as it says slippery conditions and the final mode we'll go through to is trail mode that's if you're off-roading in this thing i can't believe you're going to be doing much off-roading maybe if it's a bit muddy you might put it in that but generally probably not <laughs> Mark 1 Puma was a really fun little car to drive. It was quite lightweight and just put a big smile on your face. So what's this latest version of the Puma like? Well, we've put it in sports mode. Let's head out onto some slightly nicer roads. But as is the way typically in Britain, the heavens have opened and these roads are wet and slippery, but need to be a bit careful. Big potholes everywhere as well. The thing I'm worried about is the height of the vehicle. Is this going to make it feel all wallowy? The answer to that at the moment is... Nope. That's impressive. The turn of speed on this car is amazing. For a one litre engine, it doesn't have the right to be that peppy. That, that's great. I mean, let's slow down a bit. I mean, it's no hot hatch. It's not the ST model. But... 45, 50, 50. Yeah, that, that was good. Um, that's the hybrid engine coming here. That's the torque fill. That's the extra bit of power it's giving you. Well, I can only imagine how good the ST version of this, because this is a brilliant little car. Let's see how the bra good the brakes are. We have got extra weight on this thing. So hopefully, we're going to stop. Yeah. There's no body roll at all. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's real exhaust. I don't think it is. It probably is piped into the cabin, but... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is really, really impressive. Oh, now we need to slow down and come into a, a 40. Let's get our thoughts together. I want to do that again. But this is a fun car. This car has a wealth of technology. It's very, very impressive. So it's technology, not for technology's sake, but it's there to make your driving experience more relaxing and safer. Traffic sign recognition automatically displays the speed limit of the road on the digital dials in front of you. Active cruise control. A more advanced version of cruise control combines a radar with the functionality of cruise control and will automatically speed you up or slow you down depending on the traffic in front of you. So, for example, if you put it at 60 miles an hour, and the traffic ahead of you drop down to say 50, it would automatically slow you down. And when it sped up, it would speed you up. Makes for a very relaxing drive on motorways. Automatic headlights, automatic windscreen wipers, pre-collision detection, automatic braking, lane assist. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things on this car when you're driving along. And when it comes to parking as well, we've got cameras that can be fitted to both front and back this has just got sensors but they are very useful cross traffic alert so that's if you're reversing out onto a road and it detects something behind you it will apply the brakes and warn you but generally it's a very well equipped car that's not all of the features head on to ford's website uh, if you want to see absolutely every single feature this car has but overall yeah very impressive this uses ford sync 3 for the infotainment system completely touch screen very easy to use and pretty responsive 
So we've got a number of shortcut buttons down the bottom. This also has got Apple CarPlay, so that's the option I will be using, and it's got a wireless charging pad just underneath the climate control. This being one of the ST line cars means it has got a number of sporty touches that make it stand out over the regular titanium model. So we have really nice comfy supportive seats with red stitching on. The red stitching continues over to the steering wheel which is also a flat bottom to give it a more sporty feel. Touches of fake carbon fibre around the infotainment system. There's a little bit just in front of me I've noticed under the steering wheel and over on the left hand side. Really good stereo, we've got a B&O upgraded stereo as well. So overall, yeah, it feels really, really nice behind the wheel. 22,000 for a base model Puma, that's the titanium. 23,000 for the ST line and this, the ST line X, 24,000. The only optional extra I have fitted to this is those alloys. I think that's a bit of a bargain. You can see in this video how many features this car has. It's packed with tech. It looks really nice, comfortable, great to drive. I'm not sure what else you could want out of a car. If it was me getting this car, I'd get the ST, which is the same thing, but even quicker. So yeah, fantastic job therefore. This is brilliant. I was worried because I loved the original PM. I had so many fond memories that I thought going from a coupe to a mini SUV, it might be a bit of a disaster, but it's not. I've been proven completely wrong this weekend. This is a great car. Anyway, guys, I've got to say a massive thank you to Hendy Ford in Tumbridge Wells for lending me the car for the weekend. Do remember the dealership might be closed, but they are open for click and collect, telephone calls, etc. And watching this video. So give the guys a ring there if you do need any help. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you on the next one.